All right, in this video we want to look at how to use the graphing calculator to find a p-value when you're just given the claim and the test stat. So the calculator normally when you do a hypothesis test with it uh, will end up producing the p-value as part of that. So if you have a full problem it's not hard to find the p-value. However in this case we're basically using the, t the calculator to do the work of the table that we would normally use. So let's just demonstrate uh, real quick how that's done. Before we start though, we want to recap how it is that you find the p-value normally. So let's go ahead and put that up here so you can look at that real quick. So in order to find the p-value, we have to remember that there is a rule or a set of rules that we used. The rules basically adhered to this idea, which was that if HA had the less than symbol, that meant we were dealing with a left-tailed test, and then the rule for the p-value was find the area to the left of the test statistic, right? So whenever HA had this less than symbol, we would find the area to the left of the test stat. If HA has a greater than symbol, that indicates a right-tailed test, and we would find the area to the right of the test stat in order to calculate our p-value. And then finally, if HA has a not equal to symbol, we find the tail area and then we double it, right? So find the area in the tail and then double it. So let's look at our three cases that we're working with here and see what it is that we have. So when we look at our three cases provided in this problem, we end up having the first one having a less than symbol. That means it's a left tail test. And then we have the next one is an equal to for the claim. Now that means that the claim is actually HO and its opposite is not equal to. So this is a two tailed case. And then finally, once again, for this one, we have a left-tailed scenario. So we basically have two left-tailed scenarios and one two-tailed scenario. So let's go ahead and see how these are done. It's pretty simple. What we have to do is to think of our, our using the uh, calculator to find areas under the bell curve. And we're going to do a drawing for each of these to help us solve it. So let's start with the first one where the mean is less than 36 and the test stat is negative 2.13. Well, the fact that we're dealing with a test stat of negative 2.13, that indicates that we are talking about um, a test stat that's on the left-hand side of the curve. So we're going to draw our bell curve for the problem label our test stat over here somewhere on the left because it's negative, right? Remember the center on a z-curve is zero, so a negative value would necessarily be on the left-hand side. And then from there it says that because the claim is a less than symbol, our rule for finding the p-value is we find the area to the left of the test stat, right? Because we have a, a left-tailed test, we find the area to the left of the test stat, and we get the answer here. Um, by finding this area. Now to do that in our calculator we're going to use the normal CDF feature, right? Normal CDF feature. And we're going to go from negative infinity, which will be negative 10 to the 99th power for our calculator, all the way up to negative 2.13. Now because we're doing the standard normal z-curve here, we don't need to enter the mean and standard deviation. We can just give that to the calculator and we will find our solution. So let's remember where we find this normal CDF. We have to go second and then under VARS. And we go down to option two, normal CDF. And once we're there, we give it the minus, using this key for the negative, minus 10 to the 99th power, right? Comma, minus 2.13. Close up the parenthesis, hit enter, and we get the answer 0.01. Six, five. So the area in this tail is 0 0.0166 if you round off. Okay, so there's our answer, 0 0.0166, and that's your p-value for the problem. All right, let's look at the next case. The next problem that we're looking at is a two-tailed test, right? So we're working with the mean equal to 1.287 as our claim, but the equal to here for HO implies that HA is not equal to, so we have a two-tailed test and we have a test stat of 2.89. So for that problem, what we're gonna do is go ahead and work out this solution using a new bell curve, right? So let's draw another bell curve. And because z is 0 in the center, the z-curve, right, we'll label the 2.89 on the right-hand side because it's a positive number. Now the rule for a two-tailed test is to find the tail area beyond the test stat. So this would be the tail area, right? And we double it. So we're going to have to give our calculator, again, the normal CDF 
but we're going to start at 2.89 this time. That's the start of the shaded region, and we're going to go up to infinity, or 10 to the 99th power for the calculator, its version of infinity. Right? And then from there, that'll give us the area. But we need to remember that we have to multiply times 2, right? So we're going to do 2 times, right, the normal CDF option. Okay, so in our calculator, we just have to do it that way. So we're going to do second, or actually, let's do first 2 times, right? 2 times, and then second VARs, going down to option 2, which is normal CDF. And you don't need to put this extra bracket the way I did here. You just do two times normal CDF and then do 2.89 comma 10 to the 99th power. Close up the parentheses, hit enter, and your answer is 0 .0039. So we're going to say the p-value is 0 .0039. If you had done it in a separate step, you would have had, you know, second bars option two and you would have said 2.89 comma 10 to the 99th power close that up and enter and you would have found that this area was point zero zero one nine right and then of course one nine actually two six dot 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 and then would have doubled it in our calculator times two and we would have got the same answer we came up with which is point zero zero three eight five or point zero zero three nine Okay, so either way you do it is fine. You can double it first or double it after. It doesn't make a difference. All right, let's finally do the very last case, the last example, and that example involves another left-tailed test, but our test stat is not on the left-hand side of the curve. But don't let that confuse you. That doesn't really make much of a difference, right? So in other words, we're still going to draw our bell curve. And since Z is in zero in the center, our test stat will be on the right hand side this time. See the common mistake though is people will find the tail area on the right hand side for this problem because they're so used to finding tail areas, but that's not correct because this is a left tail test and the rule says for a left tail test you find the area to the left of the test statistic, right? So that means we need to find this area from 1.58 all the way to the left. So the calculator is going to want normal CDF, right? but we're going to give it from negative infinity, so negative 10 to the 99th power, up to 1.58. And that will give us the area for this part of the curve that's shaded, right? The area to the left of the test stat. So obviously it's going to be greater than 50%. All right, so we'll hit second bars, go down to option two. We'll use the negative key down here, minus 10 to the 99th power, comma, 1.58. Close up the parentheses hit enter and you get 0.943. So 0.943 is basically 94.3%. So the p-value is quite large, right? The p-value is 94.3%. All right, very good. Well. That basically illustrates how to use the graphing calculator to find p-value. If you weren't sure about the notation I was using here, look back at the videos um, that were covered in uh, chapter 5 where we learned how to find area under the bell curve using the graphing calculator. That will explain why I'm using the pattern I'm using here.